Welcome to this Lightroom tutorial where I will give you a quick run through of what I do to edit my landscape photos in Lightroom. I'm not going to get in too deep with masks and things like that. I will just get you started on your Lightroom journey. So first, I'm in the library right now. I have the picture that I want to edit selected. I will then go to develop. And then first thing that I want to do is I want to go to lens corrections. I will hit remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. I don't have my camera automatically saved on here so I will have to get the lens profile automatically. That's my lens right there. And then with that done I will move on to cropping. So you can just apply a standard crop here. I think I'm going to just move it over a little bit. You can do any crop ratio that you want to. I'm just going to keep mine original. Now I'll move that down a bit. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to go to basic. I'll work with my white balance. You can do the white balance manually here or you can see what Lightroom thinks would be a good white balance. We're going to turn down that a bit. I think that's just a little too warm. And then that's pretty good. I'll now work on my exposure. So you can do the global exposure here. Which I think my overall exposure is pretty good. Just want to work on my highlights a little bit. Bring up the shadows a bit. Put down the whites. Maybe lighten up the blacks a little bit so it's not that big of a shadow. And that's pretty good for overall exposure. Might take down the light whites just a little more. And then if you want to, you could just hit auto and then that would give you Lightroom's best guess as to what you want. So right now I think that's pretty good. And I'm going to work on my color now. So first thing I'm going to go to vibrance. Turn that up to about 20 or so. And then turn down the saturation just a little bit. Kind of like that look basic and then now I'm going to come down to HSL slash color. If you're not familiar, HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. So you can adjust your hue. I'll show you what that does. It then turns all my yellows, I can either turn them green and turn, turn them more orange. Double click on that to reset it back to zero. I think I'll turn my oranges a little more towards the red and my yellow is a little more towards the orange. That's pretty good, so now I'm going to work on my saturation. There's some colors in these rocks, so I'm really going to bring them out. Not a whole lot of red saturation. I'll just put that at zero, and then there is some orange, so you can see what that's doing. So I'm going to put that around 30. And my yellow, there's some yellow. And put that around 30 or so, maybe turn that up to 40. That's pretty good. There is some green. I don't want to do a whole lot of green because then, as you can see in the back, it makes that very bright, and I don't really want that. So I'm just going to do green around 15. No aqua. There is blue, but it's in the water. I don't want the water to be blue, so I'm going to actually desaturate that a little bit so it gets more white and a little cleaner. No purple, just a little bit in the shadows. Don't really want to mess with that at all. No magenta. And if you ever want to zoom in on your image, you just click on it and then it will zoom in. So I can look, zoom in anywhere in here. Luminance just determines how bright that color is. So you're not messing with overall exposure here, you're just messing with that one color. So I can turn up my orange luminance and it makes the orange brighter, or I can turn it down and the orange gets darker. I think I might brighten it up just a little bit. Yellow luminance, I'll bring that up just a little bit to make the yellow really pop. And that's all for HSL color. Next I'm going to come down to color grading, and if you're familiar with the earlier versions of Lightroom, this area was formerly called split toning. So I can come here, working on the global, I can also do highlights, which just does the image highlights. Do the midtones, which is just the middle. 
and then the shadows was just of the shadows. I'm gonna go to the global, and then I can make it warmer. This is white, so this is as shot. This is slightly warmer, and this is very cool. This is slightly cooler. You can also manually do it to make it any hue you want. I'm gonna make it just slightly warmer, and that's pretty good for color grading. And then the last part of color is calibration. So for this, I can tint the shadows. So if I want the shadows to be tinted green, leave it there. Shadows tinted purple or pink over there. I think I'll do 15 plus towards the purple. And then for red primary, any color that has a little bit of red in it, it will work on that color. So it'll work on the oranges, a little bit of the green, and the red as well. So I can tint the hue right there. We go. Right there looks pretty good. And then for saturation, you can saturate it. Saturate about that much. Looks good. Green primary. I'm actually going to turn it a little yellow so I don't get that big dark green right there. Saturate it there. That's a little more yellow. I like that a little more. And then the blue. So I'll just show you what that does there. And I'll bring that up to right about there. So that is all for the color. Next, you'll want to do is come down and add texture. So, first part of texture is you can add texture, clarity, and you can dehaze. There is a little bit of haze in there and on the water, so I will apply a little bit of a dehaze. And that just takes away a little bit of the haze. For texture, come in, and if you're unfamiliar with the difference between texture and clarity, texture makes the smaller details more textured and clarity makes the overall details more textured. So clarity adds more luminance and texture refines the smaller details. So I'm going to add texture. There's a lot of texture in these rocks so I'm actually going to bring it up quite a bit. Then I'm going to bring the overall clarity down to soften overall the edges a little more. That's all for the basic texture and then we're going to come down to detail and then sharpening. So this sharpens your entire image. I'm going to put it around 50 for the amount. And then detail is going to be around 75. And then this has sharpened my entire image. But if I have areas where I don't want them sharpened, I'm just going to hold the option key down and then slide this masking slider down. And if you remember, and as I slide the masking slider down, white reveals, black conceals. So that's a good thing to remember. White reveals, black conceals. So anything in black will not receive the sharpening, and anything in white will receive the sharpening. So I'm just going to bring that around there. I don't want to sharpen the shadows or my water at all. So I think that looks pretty good. So then this water right here did not receive any sharpening because it was in black. While all this in the light, it was white, so it did receive the sharpening. And then this was shot with ISO 100, so it's very clean. There's not really any noise. If you did have noise, you can do your noise reduction. So you would just slide that up. And you don't want to do too much of that because it will make your overall photograph a little less sharpened. But it will get rid of your noise pretty good for you. So that's all for the detail. Next I'm going to come up and add contrast. So in the basic I can go to contrast just to show you what this will do. It will add a lot of contrast for you. I typically want to add anywhere from 5 to 8, no more than 10. So that's pretty good for overall. And then I can come into the tone curve and I can adjust individually my highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. So I'm actually going to bring up my shadows a little bit so they don't get too dark. Darks I think I'll bring down a little bit. And then my highlights, which is mostly water, a little bit of these stairs here. I'll bring that down a little bit. Overall lights is really pretty good, just to show you what this is going to do. So that's really pretty good. I might actually bring up the lights a little bit. And you can come down to transform 
and then this will decide you can make your you can level your photograph so you can do it manually you can rotate it or you can do the auto and have Lightroom decide and Lightroom does a pretty good job I would say nine times out of ten it will work it'll get your horizon straight most of the time there are times when it doesn't work and you'll have to do it manually you can either come up to crop and then work on the angle or you can do it down here with rotating there's a bunch of different stuff you could do here you can really spend a lot of time with it like I said nine times out of ten Lightroom will do it pretty good for you but if it can't if there's no like straight horizon lines or anything it does sometimes have trouble so that's pretty good and then last is the effects so I can add a vignette on there go plus adds a white one go minus it adds black I like to do anywhere from 15 to 20 and that is pretty good so that is a quick run through of Lightroom there is a bunch more stuff you can do here we have no, by no means covered it all there is the healing brush tool where I can actually take out this railing here and then replace it with these rocks and it is gone so I can replace these stairs because I don't feel like they really add anything they're kind of cut off so I'm gonna replace those and after I do that I can add masks So I very quickly removed those stairs. When I edited this photo earlier, I did, took a little longer and did a little better. So now I'm going to show you masks. I won't cover it all because there's a lot here to learn, but just to show, give you a basic overview as to what they can do, I can apply a brush and I can brush this water here. And then I can refine it a little more, but just to give you a basic idea of what this can do, I can then turn up the exposure for this water, I can turn it down, I can do add contrast, I can add texture, I can dehaze it, I can sharpen it, I can change the color, there's a lot you can do here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that mask. And then I can add a luminance range mask, which just allows me to select the number of light and then I can refine it here and then basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this waterfall right here that is all I'm going to do so instead of applying a global exposure I can turn down the exposure on this just this water and then another thing to show you is radial gradients so these are very cool and very helpful if I wanted to make the sun look like it was shining on this rock apply a radial gradient add a little bit of exposure and now it looks like the sun is shining on that rock so that should give you a quick overview of Lightroom and what there is to learn with Lightroom and what there is to do I won't go through all of it So that should give you a quick overview of masks and what there is to them but as for now so that should show you what masks can do and give you a very quick overview of them I spent some more time on this picture and added in some more masks and this right here is the final product you want I will show you before
So here is what our picture looked like when we started, and this is after. That wasn't didn't take very long, it was very brief, there's a lot more to do here. And I actually spent some more time on this very same image, and this is the final product. I added in a bunch of masks, I lightened this up, I did a better job at removing those stairs, added some light there, got rid of some of the texture from the water, I decreased the exposure there, I added dehaze back here, I lightened this up, so there's a lot to learn here. Let's give you a very brief overview of Lightroom. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial today and found something to help you in your nature photography journey. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on another new video and like, hit that like button and make sure to share this video with some of your friends. I will see you next time.